The following video covers the removal and installation procedures for all trucks equipped with split journal adapters, traction rods, and traction motor nose links. Please note that in applications outside of North America, the term bogey is used in place of the term truck. Trucks covered by this video include HTCR for the SD70 and SD70 Mac family locomotives, HTCR2 for the SD80 and 90 Mac families, HTCR-E for JT42 CWR applications, and HTSC for GT46 Mac and GT46 PAC. The trucks covered in this video do not use a conventional journal and pedestal arrangement. Different procedures are required to remove and install a traction motor. For those HTCR trucks using a one-piece journal adapter, installation and removal procedures are covered by the videotape HTCR Traction Motor Removal and Installation. Before any work is commenced, ensure that all local safety... Use. The two devices shown are used in conjunction with one another to provide a safer, easier method to remove and install traction motor assemblies in SD70 AC locomotives. One tool is a ram extension which fits on the center hydraulic ram of the lifting table. It provides a better and safer means of lifting the traction motor. The second tool provides a faster and less physically demanding method for the mechanic to reinstall a traction motor. The current method of removing a traction motor 
requires supporting the traction motor on the lifting table's center hydraulic cylinder. The cylinder's ram configuration does not completely mate with the traction motor's frame, causing stress to the hydraulic cylinder and premature failure to the cylinder seals. It also can cause slippage, which can be unsafe. In the removal and installation of traction motor assemblies, a traction motor nose link assembly, more commonly referred to as the dog bone, must be pulled back to allow clearance for the motor to be lowered or raised. This procedure requires the use of a sling and come along to ratchet back the dog bone. Installation of a traction motor assembly requires supporting the motor on the lifting table center hydraulic cylinder, which creates the same stress and slippage potential as when the motor was removed. The sling and come along are used to keep the dog bone back for motor clearance as the motor is raised. Once the motor is in place, the sling is released and the dog bone returns to its position. The use of the come along and sling is time consuming and requires mechanics to work in an awkward body position under the locomotive. Our ram extension fits over the lifting table center hydraulic cylinder. It provides a flush lifting surface eliminating slippage. When the lifting table is unlocked and allowed to float, there is much less stress to the hydraulic cylinder seals. The ram extension also causes the motor frame to rotate up, clearing the dog bone, which eliminates the need for the use of the sling and come along. Our dog bone kicker tool is used during installation of a traction motor. It is placed on the motor frame and when the motor is raised, the kicker slides the dog bone back and under the traction motor frame lug. This again eliminates the need for a sling and come along to be used. When the hydraulic cylinder and our ram extension is lowered, the traction motor lug and dog bone surfaces are aligned. The combined use of these two devices provides a safer method which is less strenuous to mechanics and equipment. By using these two tools, we have cut two hours off the total time required to rewheel a locomotive. Disconnect the Veeam connector, which carries the traction motor speed and temperature probe wiring, and secure the car body lead out of the way. Remove the cleat that secures the traction motor leads to the car body. All traction motors used in the trucks discussed in this video use bolted lead connectors. Disconnect all traction motor leads. Slowly lower the traction motor and wheel set. Note that the nose of the traction motor must be raised while the motor is being dropped in order to clear the traction motor upper safety hanger from the truck frame and provide clearance for the dog bone. After traction motor safety hangers clear the truck frame, inspect journal adapters and safety chains for securement. Continue to lower the motor and wheel set until clear of the locomotive. At this time, you may wish to pause this videotape and review the material with your instructor. Installation of a replacement motor and wheel set is accomplished by reversing the above procedure. However, Please note that on AC traction motor equipped locomotives, wheel size variation must be within specifications. In some cases, 
This may result in cutting of the wheels after application to maintain tolerance limits within a truck. Refer to maintenance instruction 1516 for specifications. As you begin to raise the motor into position, this is a good time to inspect the journal adapter lateral thrust pads and the nylon wear plate located on the inside of the truck frame. Replace any damaged components before installing the traction motor. Slowly raise the motor assembly up into the truck frame until the journal bearings enter the journal adapter. As was done with removal, ensure that the traction motor safety hanger clears the truck frame and that the nose link assembly is clear of the motor. As the journal bearings go into the journal adapter, ensure that the bearing is properly seated in the journal adapter. At the same time, lower the nose of the motor to allow engagement of the safety hanger with the truck frame. Reconnect all traction motor leads, ensuring proper lug engagement and application of insulation. Reapply the car body cleats. Reconnect the beam connector and ensure that the connector is rotated to the fully locked position. An audible click will be heard. Raise the motor to final position, ensuring proper engagement of the journal adapters and air duct. Using the lift device, slightly raise the traction motor nose and position the nose link under the traction motor nose lugs. Insert bolts through the traction motor nose lugs and nose link. Lower the traction motor nose until the motor hangs on the nose link. Remove the lift device. Using huck fasteners or other EMD approved hardware, secure the nose link. If bolts are used, they must be of grade 8 and torqued according to the value indication in MI1516. Reapply the bearing retainer or the binder plate and again torque to the value specified in MI1516. Adjust the brake travel to the correct dimension for the specific locomotive application and reapply the slack adjuster pin. Reapply the sanding equipment and ensure that the sand nozzle is positioned. At this time, it is recommended that the gear case lubricant level be checked and lubricant added if required. Remove the wheel chocks and the truck blocks. Although the procedure is now complete, the traction motor operation must now be verified by loading the locomotive. Improper motor connections will cause an immediate wheel slip of a DC locomotive and wheel hop on an AC locomotive. Verify and correct the connections as required. We hope that you found this video covering traction motor changeout procedures to be helpful. Further information may be found in the applicable locomotive service manual.